Okay, joining us now to discuss, CEO of D.C. International Advisory and former Deputy National Security Advisor Steve Yates. Uh, Steve, can you explain to me what the Biden administration is trying to achieve? Because it seems like they're so bent on getting some deal, but I have yet to see anything that would actually keep Iran from developing a nuclear weapon because everything that keeps from pr developing certain portions of it, they sunset. In other words, in a few years, those restrictions go away. Well, I think everything that we're seeing, almost all of the calamities we're watching around the geopolitical landscape are a function of the Obama-Biden teams putting ideology, almost theology, above reality. And so when it comes to this Iran deal, they are convinced that they actually did reach the deal of the millennium back in 2015, uh, and that that was key to security. They seem to completely ignore the actual facts on the ground in the broader Gulf, where a different path to peace, security, deterrence was reached, not just because the Trump administration wanted to go there, but because Israel and several of our Gulf allies wanted to move in a profoundly different direction, one that didn't have the theocracy of Iran at the center. And so they've put, I think, their ideology, almost pathology in pursuit of this deal in, in the forefront. And it just ignores the reality of what's happened with Russia, the fact that China and Russia have always helped Iran escape sanctions. Uh, China itself was right at the core in enabling Pakistan and North Korean nuclear programs. So how can these cooks being in the kitchen actually solve a nuclear breakout to begin with? Yeah, I, I don't see it. It just seems like it won't. So um, as you point out, I mean, there's a difference between the theocracy that runs Iran and the people of Iran, who a lot of them are very pro-Western, but they're not in charge. So we have to deal with the government, the, the mullahs who are in charge. Do you see anything in this agreement as it stands now and as it's being negotiated, negotiated that would actually keep them from developing nuclear weapons? Absolutely not. All of the fatal flaws that were in the original agreement are there in spades in this newly revised approach. Uh, it's hard to assess something that hasn't been made very public. Uh, this is one of those things where in 2015 they tried to pretend this wasn't a treaty, and so they didn't actually have to get the usual supermajority support in the, uh, in the uh, U.S. Senate. And this time around, they're still playing fast and loose about what's classified. But if this is something that's good, that will actually advance national security interests, the American public should buy into it, and we should be able to talk more openly about how this would work. But the lack of intrusive inspections, leaving key sites off, uh, off the, the boundaries of SNAP inspections, all these things were fatal flaws in the first instance, and giving cash back and access to overseas yeah. reserves just rewards yeah. the bad behavior that happened the first time. Yeah. Um, let me ask you, because I kind of see the scenario, if they develop nuclear weapons, maybe they don't come after us. But you know what's in their neighborhood? Israel. And our friend in the Middle East, it's not like something's going to happen to them and we completely ignore it. So what's the biggest danger if Iran does get nuclear weapons, you think? Well, I think that the, the first danger is that Iran is the, the, the most notorious state sponsor of terrorism on the planet. Uh, and so whether it is from Iran directly or in their network of friends and collaborators and air quotes, uh, the proliferation of the world's worst weapons is the, the ultimate nightmare. And it's not, it's not the kind of thing where you can see a clash of forces. You don't get the warning of, say, Russian troops amassing at a border that you can see with satellites and right. cell phones and whatever else. It's something that's a shock and a horror. And that, I think, is the ultimate nightmare. It's why I think that the Biden team and these other uh, allies need to get much more serious about this. A revived uh, Iran deal is not actually going to make us more safe. Now, you're laying out the scenario that maybe the state of Iran doesn't launch a nuclear weapon, uh, but they make it available to, say, a terrorist who might actually try to use one. Now, I've talked to generals in the past that said the reason we haven't been attacked here on our soil since 9-11 directly 
is that we have told the leaders in the Middle East that if we do get attacked, we're going to say it's you and we're going to come after you. And they'll say, no, it won't be us. Oh, we know that. But we're still going to come after you. Does that work? Well, it could work. Uh, it's, it's certainly their job to make sure that we have as bulletproof a defenses and detection ability as possible. But how could anyone have uh, an absolute level of confidence about this? It really doesn't take an intercontinental ballistic missile to deliver mass death and terror to us or others around the world. Something that comes in a container that goes into a massive port. Something that comes in pieces and pulls gets pulled together by different actors. I mean, after all, we had terrible things happen in the United States at the hands of 19 hijackers with sharp blades. And so the uh, if they had right. these other kinds of capabilities to add into the mix, we really can't minimize that kind of challenge. That's why we have to make sure right. we have intrusive inspections and deterrence. If they're willing to die and then they have that weaponry, who knows where that goes. That's a scary thought. Thanks for leaving us with that, Steve. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much. I appreciate the education.